It moves smoothly. Mm -hmm. Most rappers talk smack with no action. So fresh to death, my rhymes are closed caption. Mm -hmm. Ghost writing subtitles, all nighter. With flow goes to show there's no one like him. Leave all schemes to be, be, please believe. Bring horror to the beats, the rap Stephen King. You act then you leave with cracked teeth. The spleen collapse, so you weak, lay back in the seas. Fire your breathing, heathen, don't make me unleash the dragon like Cisco, cause this sick flow. Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Burns, AKA Earl Hazard. And you are tuned in to the motherfucking Chop Shop Podcast. Lights, camera, action. Finna turn up till we can't no more. Pass it loud, burn it down. Drink up till it ain't no more. It's showtime. Hit the stage and tilt this bitch. We back. Another episode. Whole city boy chop, man. We live. Chop shop. You know what it is, man. I'm gonna let, we got a special guest. I'm gonna let you in. We're gonna let him introduce himself. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go like that. You know who this guy is, but he gonna reintroduce himself too. Play for the money. Yo, what up, y'all? Mr. Burns, aka Earl Hazard. Follow Africa, Music Genius Crew, Outsiders Crew. You know the whole nine, man. Been out here for a minute doing my shit. That's what's up. Man, thank you for having me, bro. Hell yeah, I've been waiting, man. Yeah, I've been waiting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's been a matter of time, man. They be busy as fuck, man. Hell but, yeah, You know, bro. it's just a matter of time. Yeah, both ends. Hell yeah, been hella busy, man. So what you got going, man, before we get into all the, you know what I'm saying, all the questions? What you just got, what you got going? I was light dream before we eat shit, man. You know, life is life, bro. Yeah, life is life, man. You know, being a dad, shit, taking care of the kids, man. You know, making sure my people's good. Uh, shit, I just dropped the Descendants video. You know what I'm saying? The last video for a little Africa, working on some shit with uh, Johnny Polygon. Okay. And shit, uh, as far as my own shit, I'm actually about to finalize my final uh, solo hip hop album and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna still be doing hip hop. Final? Tracks. You don't wanna, what you mean by final? Like, like as far as like my solo hip hop shit, cause I, man, I, I got like, uh, like some band shit, some live music shit I'm about to do, like some punk okay. rock. Some uh some jazz shit, neo soul shit, you know what I'm okay. saying? So you do it all then? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Bro, I used to be a part of uh Freak Juice, uh Tory Ruffin's band, uh, he on the juice making lounge and shit. You know, I used to oh, be a okay. part of his band for a minute. Oh, yeah. uh, that's what's up. Hell yeah. What made you get into music, man? Man, my whole family, bro. Like my great grandfather's first cousin is Aretha Franklin. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My mom's dad, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. My old school, he was a drummer, a DJ. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my whole life, bro, i just been surrounded by music. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just like, like yeah, man, <laughs> for real. Especially being in the South, coming up in the church. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Everybody in your family around you, they either sing or they rap, they do poetry, or they do something. You know what I'm saying? My dad was a B-boy. You know what I'm saying? He, he still... I think he, he in there, I think he's still young. But yeah, man, he used to be a top B-boy in our hometown, Louisiana, man, from Tallulah. Louisiana. Oh, that's where you from? Yeah, yeah, I'm from okay. Tallulah. Okay. Yeah, I moved here when I was 16, back in 02. And shit, I've been here ever since, bro. I haven't been in no other place. Okay, that's what's up, man. So you solo? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I do solo shit. Um, I, do, I got some group shit like uh my my partner and them, uh, Music Genius Crew, you know what I'm saying, UB, Genzo, Sam Brock. Uh, you know what I mean? We've been doing that shit since what, like 2010. Uh, with the outsiders, with uh HTK, Alan Doyle, all them. You know what I'm saying? I'm a part of that clip and yeah, right. shit too. But mostly, shit, I just I just do shit by myself. Hell yeah, I'm man, you still find passion in it? You oh yeah. Love it? Oh yeah, bro. I'm man, it's it's my life. You know what I'm saying? It's a lifestyle. A lot of niggas, they in this shit, you know, for accolades and shit. You know, it's like my therapy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of those artists, like, bro, I don't care if a motherfucker like my shit or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you like it, that's a plus. If you don't, then, you know, I'm still right. good. But it's, shit it's, me. it's therapy for the soul for you to get yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm fucking with that. Same with me. Same with me. Biggest fear, man. Ooh, man, boy, that's a good one. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm usually not a man of fear, but um, man, I know one thing though, you know, just from an experience, 
man, I feel losing my kids. Mm. That's it. I could lose anybody else, but losing my kids, everything else, like, man, I didn't, shit, you know, I've been resuscitated before, shit, I done been shot at, you know what I'm saying, I done been chased out, all that shit, I don't feel death, nothing like that, but losing my kids, I, that's, that's the only thing, man, everything else is secondary, and kids is my lifeline, fam. Yeah, family is everything. Shout out to my children, all five of them. <laughs> well, you gotta start and buy. He said, oh, bro. <laughs> he said, oh, <laughs> yeah, but I got three boys, two girls, man. I got a set of twins, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got That's a set of twins, boy and girl. You know what I'm saying? Three boys, two girls. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. dad life is the shit, bro. I love yeah, it. Yeah. I love it, man. It's way better than, you know, this music shit. You know, the relationship I build with my kids, man, it's more truer. It's more, you know, it's like an organic bond. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's it's a if you want to know what unconditional love is, that shit right there right. is what it do. And it's time, like spending time, not just financial. You know what I'm saying? Oh, time. Time. hell yeah, man! It's way more than money. Yeah. The fire in little Africa, man. I know you jumped on that. We <laughs> <laughs> got go. a, a top to touch on that. Okay. How did you, was it a call for you to come down and, and get on? Uh, how, how was it? Oh, man. It was, to be honest, it was a mix between phone calls, emails, and then finally, you know, a face-to-face -face meeting with, uh, with Chris Davis. He's like the PR person. And he came to me and was like, yo, man, I got this idea. Uh, read over it. Let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm, I'm peeping it out. I'm like, well, you know, such and such is involved with it. And, uh, you know, it's crazy because, like, this is the first interview where, like, I'm actually, you know, being open with the shit. But, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Steph Simon, man, shout out to him. But uh, at that time, we, we beat for like five years. A lot of niggas don't know I that shit. I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of niggas didn't know it. It went public for a little bit. Shout out to the Steph, man. Yeah, Steph, man. Steph, my partner, man. Yeah, yeah man, that's, I did not know this. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. We beat for like five years, and then they came up with this idea, and it was like, you know, in order for you to be a part of it, y'all gotta squash y'all shit. So you know, we was on the phone for like two, three hours, bro. And we, you know, we talked it out and shit. So, what, was the, right, what, was, what was the issue? Not jumping deep. Um, in, I mean, the, 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 the issue really was is like, like, bro, this hip hop shit, this music shit. Like, I take. I take real, you right. know what I'm saying? I ain't doing this shit for no accolade. I ain't doing this shit for no, you know, gratitude. You know what I mean? It's just like anybody in game culture. You ain't gonna have nobody false claiming your set and they saying that your brother, you know what I'm saying? You gonna check the shit. So it was just, I was seeing hella, you know, you know, just like unnecessary shit happening in the scene. I'm like, hey bro, you know, I know ain't nobody gonna check you, but I ain't trying to check you. Hey, man, you need to reconsider, man. Like, what is you in this for? Is you in this for the real cause or are you in this for, you know, these reasons? And he let me know what it was. But then, like, you know, just like certain certain opportunities pop up. I'm like, hey, bro, what's up? Like, you ain't hit your boy up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I'm not involved in that. And kind of Ryan is just like, it's just a bunch of, you know, lying and shit. Like, bro, don't, you know, don't lie to me, my fam. Right. But, you know, and I was calling this shit out. So it's like, <clears throat> Shit was going on that you felt like you need to be a part of that you wasn't a part of. Yeah, but not just that because I'm okay if I'm not a part of it. Just don't lie to me and say like, hey bro, I'm not in charge of this. This is in charge, but you don't know that I'm close friends with such and such and such. And then I go to them and they're like, nah, man, Steph is the person you dial at. And I'm like, yo, you just gonna lie to me like that, fam? And then, you know what I'm saying? Instead of taking accountability, you wanna just like throw it in my face like, oh, I'm the one that's doing this and that. And it's like, Come on, fam. You're not no big dog. You know what I'm saying? In that sense. So don't do that with me. You know what I'm saying? We could be up front. I just didn't like the fake shit that was going on. So, and then what made the beef go public was I was being tagged in this post about people rapping over their vocals. Uh -huh. And I'm like, man, y'all know what I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? We're going like, to touch on that. Yeah, yeah. That. But, um, man, I got called out on some shit, you know, some personal shit. And I was just like, hey, man, that's... It's not cool, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got nothing to do with this. But uh, we end up, you know, eventually squashing any shit. Well, but then come to, come to find out, bro, how I got picked to be a part of it, 
they had a list of artist names. Okay. And they was like, we're going to vote, yes or no. Okay. And then we come across, you know, yeah. they came across everybody's name. And my name come up, instead of motherfuckers voting, they look at Steph was like, what you think? He was like, no, nah, I don't want that nigga part of it. Like, this is, he told me this out of his mouth. You know what I'm saying? He said he don't want your part of it? Yeah, like, everything that's going on, I'm telling you, he told me this is what happened. What's crazy, everything he's telling me that's happening, I already had a sense of it. Like, this is why I think I'm a part of this. This is why I think I got called. All right. But everybody looked at him like, what you think? And he was like, nah. And the guy that hit me up, Chris Davis, he was like, hey, bro, we can't have this project without him. Who is Chris him. Davis? I he's the, he's the PR guy, man. Shout out to Chris Davis. He's uh he's the head of uh, Tulsa Creative Engine. Uh, they throw, like, um, monthly showcases and shit, and they, okay. they showcase different right, artists. Yeah, yeah man, link in with them, bro. And uh, they actually pay artists, you know what I'm saying? I just did a show with them uh, Thursday, you know what I'm saying? Got paid a bag. Okay. And... Uh, they made every, every they made sure everything was straight. That's what's up. But yeah, man, it was it was mostly like a call. It was like, bro, look, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna move on unless you was a part of the shit. And I'm like, well, shit, I'm down Ooh, with it. Too. Who as said far that? as like Chris Davis and like he said that. Yeah, he was say he was saying that he told you know Even Steph like Steph. yeah. Okay. But once he you know once you know Steph came around, and I was like, all right, bet we gonna vote. Who all wanted to be a part of it? And then every unanimous, everybody was like. I didn't get any notes. It was like, yeah, we this thing got to be a part of it. And then end up having the best song on the project, the best video from the project. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm saying that the last video was the cartoon. Yeah, the animation and shit. Yeah, yeah I wrote all of that, that fam. Yeah, I, I did the production. Up. You know what I'm saying? My homie uh, Lennon Alvarez from Buddy FX, he shot it, edited it. My homie Zach Raw, he did the animations and shit. But they, they spent nine nights straight. Okay. I just like getting that shit done, yeah, bro. Shit hard. I'm gonna have to go back. Like now, talking to you, I'm gonna have to go back. No, I said. Oh yeah, bro. And we did it with a five thousand dollar budget. Yeah. yeah, bro. We almost did that video. Almost didn't happen. But uh, the video? Yeah. Oh, okay. We did that with five racks, bro. Oh, okay. I mean, shit. It should have been more, but I mean, you know, we got out. We got out of what we could get out of it. You that know. Shit hard. Yeah, yeah man. Now, step, 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 my dog, man. Yeah. And. <clears throat> When I seen Steph, we talked about, you know what I'm saying, we ain't going to detail of, of you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, but we talked about the, the project, and he supposed to be on the podcast, mm -hmm. and now that you on here, we don't have to go, when I have him on here, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, yeah, of course, go, oh yeah, you know what I'm, saying? I'm with that. We don't have to reiterate that, but, so, far as the project goes, mm -hmm. y'all feel like, Y'all got the, the right recognition. Did it go how y'all wanted to go? Uh, do you feel mm -hmm. like it was a dud? How do you feel like, how do you feel overall as a project? Cause I see like individuals still trying to release, you know what I'm saying, music from it to keep it, keep the momentum going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you feel about it? To be honest, me, it could have been handled way better. For as what? Okay. As far as business. the business being open, you know, being truthful, being trustworthy, I feel like it, sh it, it could have been more. It would have gotten bigger if people didn't have ulterior motives. Okay. When you're going into something, you say, hey, this is the purpose of this, but you got an ulterior motive. What you're trying to display the purpose as is not going to happen. And everything that, that's in the dark is going to come to light. It would have it would have really went big, bro, if niggas would have really put their foot in it and not because here's the thing. The first meeting, bro, that we had with like the Kaiser family and shit, this is what was said about the project and what this project was about. They looked at the Revenge of the Dreamers, the J. Cole documentary, right. when they did Revenge of the Dreamers Part Three, they wanted to mimic that. And then not only that, Steph was saying in the meeting, he was like, this is basically a sequel to Born on Black Wall Street. And it's like, I'm, and me thinking to myself, I'm like, nah, nigga, we're going to be doing something and it's connected to the ancestors It need to be about that. You know, right. it don't need to be about no personal endeavors. Like, but. Well, I'm going to give you this. Mm -hmm. When I talked to him, he told me that it eventually was supposed to be a solo project. So I mm. can so it came, I guess it came to him as being a solo project, but then everybody convinced him to being 
a group. Put no, people that's up. not true. I didn't. I didn't. This, I didn't. This, I don't, yeah, yeah, I'm that's not, not true I'm, at all, not, fam. I'm not here to speculate. Or yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm, oh, oh, totally. Oh, I'm just me. giving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was told to me? That's not. That's not true. I didn't convince anything. From the beginning, it was displayed out there as a group thing. Okay. We were even told that we have artistic. Well, that's what I'm saying. It might have been before y'all was introduced to it, but from him, he said it started out. out as a solo project for him. Uh -uh. And then he said everybody voted, but uh, you know what I'm saying, people told him to just go ahead and make it a group project and put, you know what I'm saying, everybody on to represent. Yeah, no, that's, that's not true. What he told me was, and he even said this in the meeting, Dr. View moved down here. He did a project with a group of city MCs and, and he produced it and it was called the Space Program. And he wanted to do something like that, but bring awareness to the Tulsa Race Massacre. So he came to Steph like, hey, man, I want to do this compilation. And Steph was like, nigga, I don't know you. Who is you? You coming into my city, like trying to do something like, nah, fam, you ain't going to do that. And then he got, you know, he went on ahead and okayed it. Okay. But with that big of a project, they can't nobody do that type of stuff by themselves. Could nobody do that by themselves right. because who... Who are who is anyone to move to a place, don't have no knowledge of the hip hop scene, trying to do a project at this big of a level without involving? That's just like, I wanna sell dope on your block. I'm gonna come on your block, like I know this your block, fam. I got these bricks. And they gonna have you, Thank you. You think he you think player gonna let that happen? Okay. Hell so, no. Not to cut you off, but if we if we talking about the song on the radio. No, no, this is the project. The whole project. This is the whole project. Yeah, I'm talking about the stuff that got something to do with the whole, the whole project. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this this is yeah. not just one song. This is the purpose yeah. of the project. Yeah, this one I'm talking about the, the whole far and little Africa thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is that. It wasn't supposed to be whatever's being told to you, fam. It's a lie, right. because the same people that's telling you this are the same people that's showing me proof, receipts, showing me messages, emails. Conversations, all this stuff. Okay. None of that stuff is true, fam. So you got receipts. Yeah, I do. Yeah, now check this out. We were also told that we have artistic freedom. Mm -hmm. When I did Descendants, the people that's supposed to be on it was me, Written, Quincy, and Saran. And my idea of the song was, we're descendants of the ancestors that died in the Tulsa Race Massacre. Right. So since the mayor not trying to give us reparations, we gonna burn all your shit down. We gonna kill your kids and wife, and we gonna take it back from y'all how y'all took it from our people. But when the when the songs got turned in, I got called into the studio and they was like, we need you to re-record your verse so it can be crisp. I'm like, cool. They was like, Dr. View was like, say man, so I know you're the only person that out of 150 something beats, 180 beats, I'm the only person that picked that beat and came up with that concept. Dr. View wanted me to switch the song. He was like, when I hear this beat, I hear that. You know, all the brothers is loading up to go save Dicky Rowe. And I'm like, Steph Simon called himself Dicky Rowe. We just squashed our beef. What the fuck I look like making a song about saving a nigga that don't give a fuck about nothing I got going on or 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 the purpose of what this album's supposed to be. No, I'm not changing my viewpoint. Spring Quincy came into the studio and they're trying to convince him to convince me to change it. And I was like, no. The only thing that's different on that song is we add the hook. They took off written as Saran and added Thomas Who. So when you listen to the song and pay attention, both of our verses are in two different times. My verse is in the now. His verse, he started off uh, worried, on the, worried on the street that the crackers arrested Dickie Beck. He's talking about going downtown to save Dickie Rowe. That's not what the song is about. So to all the people out, that's not what the song is about. It's two different times, bro. <laughs> So that was switched without my knowledge. Yeah. And then later on, I was told like, oh, we added Thomas. We was gonna just let you take the song by yourself. Why didn't you let me get the song by myself? Right. Cause this is the thing about Tulsa, bro. Tulsa music scene, they don't like niggas to, to, to outshine them. Mm. They say, oh yeah, everything is us. It's a together thing. But no, nah, fam, if you shining too bright, niggas ain't gonna like that. Mm. They ain't gonna fuck with you unless you're doing something for them. And that's a cancer on this town, fam. It is. Yeah. It I, is. For, yeah, for the record, 
That's I a, also a, told him that. That's an yeah. Guy. I also told yeah, him yeah. that. That's an for the record. Yeah. And but was it a plus? That's what I'm saying. For as far as the overall mm -hmm. in your eyes, was it a plus? I'm 50-50 on that. I would say it's a plus because it, I'm gonna say yes because it got me the attention on that song that it needed. It got the attention to the town that it needed as far as the industry. I'm gonna say no because it that song, my my involvement in that project, I didn't have fully artistic freedom. If so, then the way that I constructed the song would have stayed that way. Right. You know what I'm saying? When I came up with the idea for the video, I wouldn't have been asked to change the play, this, to change that. The play, um, though, advocate. Mm -hmm. When you have a leadership over a project, <clears throat> it always gonna have to go through steps. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Even though I know I feel you on, know what I'm saying? I created this song. I I wanted who else, if I wanted. But when you have to turn it in a project and people have to oversee it, some stuff might get changed. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I know you might not want it to get changed. And also on their part, they should have came to you and told you beforehand. Yes. Like, okay, this but is what we finna do. Like yes. It don't always no, happen like that. No, it don't. It don't. It and don't that's, that's the problem like that. that I have is that if you telling me in the beginning, hey, if you tell me, Burns, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna pay for your studio time, all this equipment. You ain't gotta drop no money and I'm gonna pay you. You have full artistic expression. Say what you wanna say, how you wanna say it. Yeah. Right. And then when I turn into shit, you're like, hey bro, so we gonna switch this around because this is too yeah. controversial or this yeah. and it. Yeah. Then I don't have artistic freedom. Let yeah. me know that in the beginning so I know how to move. Right, right. I'm okay. I'm okay, time, with, I'm okay with accepting the no. In this day you know time, I mean? controversial, that's the shit that's gonna go. Like people gonna want but to hear the, no, I said, even though you gonna get the backlash, yeah. It's also gonna get you the attention that you want. Yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying, like. But I'm ready for that. whatever though. But see, the thing is, a lot of cats they want this type of environment, but then when it's time to actually move on it, they tuck their tail. You can't right. say you're a revolutionary and then you put out a video called reparations, depicting one of our homies uh, playing the mayor and y'all kidnapping them and then be scared to put it out. Right. No, nah, my my grandparents was Black Panthers, fam. I fight for the people and I'm not scared. I'm not scared, fam. Don't say you about this say, and then be gonna, about something else. Yeah, I'm gonna say you're not about what you're talking about. If I ever, you know what I'm saying, sit down with them. But a lot of people talk that, 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 that black talk, and I'm a black man. But I'm gonna tell you, man, a lot of motherfuckers ain't ready to die. Ain't, mm -hmm. ready, ain't really ready to go there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Green Wall Street, right? Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers die. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? Put nigga happening to defend, perform, like nigga, like, and, and a lot of motherfuckers just not, not really. Motherfuckers say they is, but a lot of motherfuckers ain't ready to go there. Mm -hmm. And that far in little Africa, that far in little Africa shit. Let me, let me shout out to, to you, all y'all. That shit was far, my nigga. That's exactly what it was. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, and I'm not, and I'm on the nose. Yeah, and I'm not saying like, I'm against. Everyone that's a part of it, or every aspect. No, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm very grateful for it, and I, 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 I am grateful for Steph. I'm grateful for Chris. I'm grateful for Tone and Saint Don and Bezel and you know Atoria and everybody that has something to do with the video. I'm very grateful. I'm never, you know, I'm I'm never ungrateful for anything because I didn't have to do that. Yeah, that motherfucker was that motherfucker was tossing niggas. You know what I'm saying? You said you're from Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, I'm from the book. I've, I've been living here since 02, so I've been I've been here over 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 20 some years. Yeah. But that motherfucker, when I heard it, and the people that I know, the uh, uh, on there, it was tough some niggas putting this shit together. And that motherfucker was live. My nigga, shout out to y'all. Yeah, nigga, man, thank you, bro. I just felt it, it could have went it could have went hella far, man. Like the publisher, uh, the publisher we had, we had Beyonce's uh, publisher, okay. my publicist, her publicist. We had Beyonce, and then come to find out later, we had like five other big name publicists, bro. Mm -hmm. But out of all those, we had Beyonce's publicists. Yeah. We had Motown behind us. Yeah, yeah. But then you gotta think about this too. It's an industry thing too. It was the 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 centennial for the race for the race massacre. 
everybody want a piece of that that brings revenue that brings money yeah. right yeah. so yeah. you got vultures like these labels and these industry motherfuckers they came in and got they do and then they went out ask me how many times have motown posted on the motown page about the descendants video right. we've gotten over 1500 views in a month we got over 500 in a couple days them other videos with high views, hey, whether they paid for the views or not, that ain't my business, I don't know. But a real nigga in the industry that's been doing this shit could tell if this shit is organic right. or if this shit was body. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that mm. body shit. I do everything organic. And I just feel like it could have been, it could have been way better. I know I'm not the only person that feel like this. Like I've had fans that come up to me, yeah. message me like, yeah. hey bro, this could have been this and that. You know what I'm saying? This could have been on a bigger scale, bro. but this is what I feel. And I'm like, hey, this is what you feel. That's how I feel too, and I don't even know you. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, like, it, it's, a, it's a good thing because nobody else in the industry would have stepped up and did that type of project with us. Yeah. You know that, what I'm that's saying? That's one of the things that I think made them motherfuckers kind of like I ain't gonna even say kind of unique. Mm -hmm. The way y'all put that motherfucker together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The way, you know what I'm saying? It was, like I say, tough some niggas. You know what I'm saying? They, they put that motherfucker together. I mean, that motherfucker was, that motherfucker was different, man. I, I, I love to see. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Motown should have backed it. Should have backed it more. Yeah, they should have. You know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, but, man. Okay, that comes, also it comes with, with, with bread too. Like, yeah, sometimes man. you gotta yeah. take it in your own hands. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right there. And push more. Like, yeah. if everybody would have came as a collective and put right more there. money behind it, yeah. sometimes you got to take that because the label ain't going to do yeah. uh, so much. Yeah. But so if you would if came, for yeah, so yeah. if yeah. it came to motherfuckers putting yeah. their money behind more or uh, whatever single or whatever mm -hmm. the case might be, I think it would have went. A but see, but that's the thing, and, and, and that's where it falls on the, the executive team of the project, right? Okay, let's take out the label. Who are the people that are actually making the executive moves for us? Right. But they weren't making it for us, they was making it for them. Right. Why every single interview you see, you didn't see different people. You, it, it was a, like, when we start complaining about this shit, that's when you start seeing like interview, like we did an interview in front of the mansion with Revolt TV. Okay. And like Chris, came, Chris Davis came to me and was like, hey bro, you think you could do an interview? I'm like, yeah, I know I can do an interview, but y'all don't believe I can do an interview because of what y'all hear about my past and, you know, and the that rumors. Be a, and it, yeah, that should be. Yeah. That, should that should even be a factor, factor yeah. but it is a factor, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, people literally don't come yeah. to me for family oriented concerts, interviews, because they feel like that's not my fitting. But the ones that you are picking for these interviews, they have in the trouble, they have in trouble not cussing. They have a trouble not saying sexual explicit. Right. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I got five kids. I hosted Juneteenth in 2019. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I know what to do. I know this business. But it's just, you know, people people have their speculations and you know they, they can have their opinions on that. But yeah, plus favorites, you know. You yeah, yeah. Favorites. Yeah, yeah. You know but it's 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 about it's this right here too. Too many Indians trying to play cheap. Man. And too had too many done, Dubois man. and not enough garbage, not yeah. enough Nat Turner. That's what I see, yeah. like, here, just being here with the music. I, you know what I'm saying? I fall back in and out because I got different shit going. So, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit don't, it don't affect me. But <clears throat> what I also see is I see that. Uh -huh. Too many Chiefs, you know what I'm saying? Not enough Indians. Too many people trying to play like they the person yeah. and you not the person. Yeah. Like, you're not even close. You know what I'm saying? No, and I couldn't even tell you how many times motherfuckers they hit me up like, hey, Burns, I hit a wall with this idea. What do you think? Yeah. How would you do it? And yeah. I'd be like, man, this is how I would handle it. And then they would take exactly what I told them and go utilize it. It's like, now if you want if you want an idea, just ask me for an idea. But right. don't make it seem like, oh, you're the one that came up with this. Right. That happens all the time. Yeah. People will play chief, but then when they come man. down and do you cheap got... things, they're like, yeah, sometimes you gotta make people pay, man. You gotta make people pay like that way. Hey, bro, I'm monetizing. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, I mean, like that. If this 
Having I more time learned. behind us now, like, why that. would anybody want to monetize anything they're doing? You know what I mean? Like, I taught also people in this town how to monetize. You know what I'm saying? What they got going on long time ago. That's a gift. But, yeah. If people are doing, they've been going on since the beginning of the yeah, time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. I everybody want to be the man. Like, every, yeah. that's the basic what it is. Everybody want to be the person. That should have given, right? And yeah. sometimes, in order for everybody to shine, somebody got to shine first. And yeah. people are not getting it. Yeah. And that's why Tuss is going to always, not, not, hopefully, the curse will be broken one day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where, oh. where the floodgate yeah. uh, uh, come in. But the reason why the curse is here, and I want y'all to pay attention, is because no, everybody wants to shine at the same time. Mm -hmm. Instead of somebody getting their foot in first and then reaching back and pulling everybody else in, and then we shine together. Prime example, got it now. Salute, mm -hmm. got it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> got it cool. I don't really listen to him like that, but the movement of what he's doing right now, as far as. It's revolutionary, you know what bro. Saying? Yeah, what he's doing. Pulling people back in. Mm -hmm. Not everybody shine. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do that. That's no more people to do that. P, you know what I'm saying? Ross. Like the list could go on and on, but it gotta take one person to break through. Now you got Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do name? Uh uh dude that broke. He 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 out there. Okay, my mind jumping blank. My bad, man. No, nah, no, you, I, I think I know you. Oh, but he man. got, he got, he signed with, I guess Atlantic. Uh, June, June. Yeah, 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 yeah. He signed with Atlantic. Shout out to June, man. So if he jump, you know what I'm saying, get bigger, and he reach back and pull people up with him, then that'll be a plus. Mm -hmm. But right now, how I'm seeing it, he got the biggest buzz. You know what I'm saying? Far as well, labels, labels, they post this shit. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta yeah. Post shit every now and then. They might not post it on his page, but I see a pro, a promo run mm -hmm. for it. And I feel like if he reach back and do it, that'll be great for the town. That's on him. You know what I'm saying? That's the measure of the man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Yeah, but everybody ain't built like that. Yeah, though. everybody. And then, and then you have to think about this too. He can also. Get on that platform and be like, all right, I'm gonna look back in the town and see who actually organically making noise, and it's, and, and it's real. Or he could be like, no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna reach back and pull my homies up. I could care less about what Burns got going or what Steph got going or what Verse got going. You know what I'm saying? Or what Saran or Mike D got going. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna reach back to the people that he's connected with, which is understandable. But this however, however, is a bad thing because like no, it's not. Oh, no, it's, it's first, never a bad thing. Yeah, your first mind is gonna be to go for what you know. Right. Like, yeah. If he, don't, right. if he don't know Burns and he don't know Steph and whatever, yeah, of course, and that's it's yeah, gonna be natural that's for a nigga to shoot. Bam, I'm gonna shoot her. No, bro. I'm not saying yeah, that. Yeah, but and then if a nigga yeah, hate on that, that, then he just a hater. Yeah, However, yeah, yeah, now, yeah, now, yeah. let's just say, <laughs> let's just say us three, we didn't came up in our own way, and this is how we met, and we said we have a brotherhood through hip hop. We started, we started the bombest hip hop scene in the Midwest in Oklahoma. Let's just say Oklahoma. We got the dopest hip hop scene in Oklahoma. We started that. And then we all say, if one of us make it, we go all make it. Right. But then I make it and I look at you in your face and be like, hey bro, I'm coming back to get you. But I'm pulling these. Wait a minute, you gonna be like, these niggas just hit the scene. Right. We built this together. This was our pack. No, bro, I'm not even in that for it no more. I'm in it for the money and fame so I can make sure me and my, my, my girl and my kids is right. No, fam, man, this should have been what it was in the beginning. I would have knew how to handle you and I would have knew how my relationship with you should have been. That's when it's like, okay, now they're static. But then you can never blame a person or be yeah, mad at a person if they're reaching back and grabbing their homies and yeah, you ain't got no ties to them. Say, you can't, a, yeah, you can't, yeah, be, you mad can't be mad at that. Yeah, can't but if we saying we brothers and this is our plan, we build this shit together, we go together, we lead together. Right. But ain't no way I'm gonna take you to an after party and y'all came with me. And I'm saying like, hey bro, I'm about to go with these bitches. Y'all right to figure out what the fuck y'all need to do for y'all self. That's not your partner. And that's the type of situation that's going on without the town. That's, and it's not just with, it's, it's all over, fam. It's it all is, I see, over. I see it, but you know, 
I but feel, who to blame them though? I mean, at the same time, I feel like when you got a hustle about yourself, like ambition can't be taught. When you got a hustle about yourself, you know what I'm saying? Can't shit stop you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you going to get it regardless. You know what I'm saying? No. How you get it, that's on you. Mm -hmm. But if you got ambition about yourself, you're going to get it regardless, no matter trying to reach or uh, leech out somebody the next year. Yeah, minute. yeah. And that's one thing I don't like either. And that's happened. That's a, that has happened in the scene where motherfuckers is like, hey, bro, you got a, you got a nice amount of resources. We finna fuck with this nigga until we get what we need. Yeah. yeah. It's just like the situation on Blow when the nigga was like, bro, tell me who yeah, your connect is. Yeah. He's like, nah, man, we they doing good. Come they on, man. Listen, they they happens, you know what I mean? That happens more than often. Man, that's, that it's, happens more than often. Here, it's, it's a habit. It's, yeah, it's, it's an addiction. More than it's not just here. It's, yeah, not, it's, it's everywhere. everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere, man. Man, yeah. I love right. this, bro. What's your, what's your, what's your uh, proudest accomplishment? Oh yeah, we you know what I'm saying we do we different here, man. Yeah, I love yeah, this, we, bro. We, 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 we different, you bring in questions yeah. on my proudest accomplishment, fam. That's right. Is my proudest accomplishment is being able to teach my children the real. You know what I'm saying, and and seeing and watching them. And, and experiencing and utilizing the knowledge that I gave them. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm very, very proud. I'm a very proud father. All oh, father my children, man. You know what I'm saying? And when I see them utilize the things that I've taught them, I'm like, I, I did good. Right. Cause I can fuck less what any adult feel about me. Or, you know, if I'm teaching I'm giving them knowledge and they don't utilize it, hey, that's on you, fam. Yeah. If I, if I show you how to fucking drink water, I can't drink it for you and quench your thirst. If you don't do, if you don't drink the water yourself, you know what I mean? But then my kids, when I see my children, they're utilizing the 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 knowledge and, and the wisdom that I bestowed upon them. Man, I'm happy. I'm happy. Alright, let's go back. Let's go back. Rapping over your vocals. <laughs> <laughs> you, know we gotta, you know we gotta touch on it. Mm-hmm. Far as me, I'll put myself out there like me, I got so much shit going. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I might forget some shit. I, I record so much music. So I might forget some shit. So I might sometimes I, I rap with them. Uh-huh. Sometimes I rap with them. Yeah. I want your stance, man. I want your stance. Cause I seen numerous posts. I, I, <laughs> I'm always in tune with the streets. Yeah. So I seen numerous posts. But how you feel? And also, mm -hmm. it's big in the industry. It's big in the industry. We seen, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we seen before you even touch on it. We seen the uh, the kissing uh, with the locks and uh, Dipset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ver the verses. That was the greatest and verses. Of, yeah, it was. It was great. And one of the main things Kiss kept saying is, man, y'all could have been in the car list to these niggas. They rapping on their vocals. <laughs> Cause this is hip hop. It is. It's hip hop. Man. It is. It's a response. It's just like if you call yourself a seafood, you call yourself a kung fu master, and you don't kick. It's like you know how you're supposed to kick. You're supposed to turn your hip. You're supposed to pivot your ball and your foot and all that. Right. Nah, fam. It's not. It's 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 short. I was just. What's crazy? I was just watching a, a short clip of Wendy Day. You know Wendy Day is right. Wendy Day. She owns a rap coalition. She didn't got. Cash money day distribution deal for that 10 mil. You know what I'm saying? She managed Eminem. She managed all these great people. Even she say, it shows a sign of unprofessionalism. I can listen to your song in the car. I can listen to your song on my phone, in the bathroom, on my earbuds. When I'm paying a price to see a live performance, that's what I'm paying for. I'm not paying for you to rap over your studio shit, over right. your song that's on Spotify. You pulling up your Spotify to do your set. Right. That's unprofessional, fam. It is. And if you if you pay attention to like a lot of like live albums with rock bands, live albums with rappers, they got concert albums out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every time they perform, the live version is way different than the studio track. 
That but it's a different, it's, a, it's, a different yeah, it's a different entity, fam. Yeah. So when you rapping, and I understand like people forget their lyrics, you know, all this and that, I do too. However, you cannot show the people yeah, you're that right. I know this is your. Yeah. This is where you come yeah, up short at. Yeah, you gotta keep it. You keep gotta it. keep it, cause this. If you're doing it, fam, you got people that's actually spending time and spending their money to come and see you and say, "Hey, I'm a huge fan of your work. Your work inspires me to keep right. living." Man, you supposed to go 100. percent Don't half-ass that shit. Why you gonna cut your shit with fentanyl when you can just keep your shit the same and you can still keep your numbers coming in and keep it pure? Everybody's safe. No, fam, it's not cool. I mean, all the all some some of the greatest martyrs have said that Nipsey said that. You know what I'm saying? Nipsey is like, nah, that's not cool rapping over your vocals and motherfuckers. I didn't have a lot of it's a lot of major artists that's that said, and it's true. But at the same time, like it gotta be, it gotta be something that you push it. So if, mm -hmm. if it's a single, you should know that single. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And then that's where you can learn it. Yeah, if you just doing song, song, song. You know what I'm saying? You gonna end up fucking up anyway. Nah, bro. Look, let me tell you. I didn't did. I did shows where I've had thirty minute sets, no breaks, and every single song I've had, I'm rapping multiple. There's no excuse for me, fam. I chose this life. I got to do my job the way it's supposed to be done. But so and that, and that's, got, that's the skill. Uh, that's the skills of being an MC, though. Who Breath control. All that stuff, all that stuff coming to play. Who was you coming at though? Shit, just I mean, I was coming at everybody that's like shitting on people that are saying that rapping over vocals is whack. Now, I'm I'm a big advocate on, you know, I mind my business, but if you ask me for my outlook right. and my viewpoint, I'm gonna give you that. But still, I'm gonna mind my business. I've been in hella shows where I seen some of my close homies rapping with vocals. You see me bobbing? You may. Depends on what song it is, but I'm also thinking to myself like this nigga is doing this bullshit right now. I really want to go home, but I'm I didn't I didn't spend my money on that. You might but see you me one day. One day you might. <laughs> but, but my thing is though, if I didn't want to see that, why would I spend my money to be out here? That's why true. would I be here? And if I've done that, why am I complaining? So everybody different. Yeah, everybody different. Yeah, everybody, everybody different, bro. I don't really care. I don't care about what anybody do. Do what's best for you. Fuck what anybody think, say, or do any opinion or speculation. Fuck all them. And if they say they care about you, they don't. Fuck what anybody gotta say. Do what you do what you wanna do. However, if I come and ask you like, hey bro. What do you think about this, this, and this? And you said, I don't ride with that. I can't be mad at you because I asked you how you felt. Right. If I didn't want to know how you felt, if I felt like I wasn't going to agree with it, why would I ask you? And that's a part of building. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And black people have a habit of not being content with that. They want everything to go in their perspective. And it's not, that's not how life goes, fam. If a nigga rap over his vocals, hey man, do what you do, fam. But if you ask me, my personality look on it, I don't like it. I don't it's a better, it come out as a better show, especially if you know your 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 lyrics. Or yeah, if you know your or shit. Whatever you got going on, it comes out as a better show. Yeah, bro. All right. Where they can find you at, man? Uh, you can find me all social media platforms at 318ME918. Or you can check my website at tribexenterprises.net. Um, man, I'm on Spotify, I'm on Tidal, I'm on SoundCloud, I'm on Bandcamp. Um, and shit, if you want to connect with me, man, just hit me up on all my social medias. I talk back, man. Talk to me, I talk back. You know, um, shit, you can catch me on the Chop Shop podcast. Yes, like sir. Like you can right now. And <laughs> make sure y'all like, subscribe to my guy. He's been putting in a lot of fun. I just want to, man... I'm glad we're here. I want to tell you that every time I tell you this, bro, every time I see you, you know, it's like real quick. Yeah. But this is the most time we spend with each other other than like, you know, like World Culture Music Fest and shit like that and different shows. Bro, I've always loved what you've done, fam, because being an artist is not from here and move here and make a staple and a fucking like 
nigga, you you are a staple here, chop like for real, dog. Cause my first time hearing about you was through DV. You know what I'm saying? I heard you, and I'm like. I am, I was born here, I just moved. Oh, for real? Yeah, I was born here, I just moved. Oh, man, when shit. I was born, when I was young, you, you kind of shared that too, though, you know, because you've yeah. been gone. So, yeah. you kind of shared, you, not kind of, you shared it with, you know what I mean, to it's come back same, and same same shit. plant your feet, yeah. Yeah, and not only that, I see that you, you, you actually, whatever opportunities you have, if it's available to others, bro, you reach out. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? You don't just be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just use you for this. Oh, like, nah, and you like, hey, man, I want you on this. And you actually flourish with those people that you collab with. And I just want to say, bro, you are a motherfucking, you are a king in my eyes, fam. Likewise, man. man. Bro, bro, hey. That's why when you hit me, you know, I, I, I got to run, bro. When I see you, <laughs> you know when I see you that day. Yeah. You know what I say? Because <clears throat> we ain't put it out yet. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just doing episodes or whatever, but. Me just getting the feedback where everybody fucking with for the snippets I put out, you know what I'm saying? Everybody fucking with it. I had to get you, you know what I'm saying? I had to push you on that. Yeah, bro. And, and a lot of people, but coming from where I come from, and I think <clears throat> that's why the hate flourish is everybody want to see everybody up. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's a town where a city, like, it's a big city where everybody it's on the rise like they want to bring everybody up and it make you feel better when you bring somebody else up mm -hmm. and that's what i'm trying to bring here like <clears throat> everybody i connect with if i see something and i see you you good at what you do or you got something good going on yeah you know what i'm saying i want to bring you into my world too and let's let's build yeah, yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. I ain't trying to. And that's how you supposed no, to look at it. Yeah, no hate. Or, you know what I'm saying? I don't come in like. Yeah, like bro. I come in as, as love. Like let's 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 get this shit together. You doing it? You, you know doing it the way it's supposed to be done, and that's that's the that's the true character of a real leader. You know what I'm saying? That's a re that's characteristics of a real leader. You're not hating on nobody. And not only that, you're not dealing with no drama. Right. Hey, fam, nah, right. keep, like, that, shit yeah. keep that shit that way. Keep that shit that way. And that's why I say, like, bro, you you are a pillar of the town, fam. Like, like uh, people don't give your flowers enough. I want to give you your flowers while I'm here, fam. So, I appreciate just, that. bro, I, you got my support, fam. Like, I appreciate that. Yeah, anything you need me on, fam, you got me, dog. Like, straight up. Yeah, we're going to work. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to work. Oh, yeah, we go. We're it's going to be more, man. Man, I, I wanna. Hey, next time I come back, we need to talk about uh. Some, I see you got the, the Street Fighter. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 hey, look. I have not been thrown. Bro, look. Hey, I've literally did Street Fighter tournaments as a kid. Like before I turned twelve, I was I was beating Asian hey, man, cats, we, bro. We've been on it, man. I was paying yeah, my grandma it. rent. With with Street Fighter, my nigga. Yeah, like, you know, I'm cool. Hey. <laughs> we grew up on it. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. You know, we grew up on that shit. Yeah, yeah. Nintendo, niggas like All right. Man, for real. What motivates you? We ain't finished, man. What motivates you? Life struggles. Every every aspect of life struggles, accomplishments. The fact that I know that I'm breathing, my breath is what what motivates me fam because I'm like I got something to do. I haven't I haven't I haven't found my purpose yet. You know what I'm saying? I haven't accomplished what I need to accomplish before I leave this earth. So that's what just man life bro it motivates me dog. How you get into the the you said you do the rock. Mm hmm How you get into that? Man, I've been in I've been a fan of rock since my younger days like Guns N' Roses, Black Flag uh, fishbone, bad brain, but shot the fishbone. Those are my people's dog. Uncle Angelo, Flying J, uh, Uncle Dirty Walt, Norwood Fisher. How I got involved with the uh, the rock scene here. Yeah, so that's different, like for us being a hip hop artist, then switch switch over. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I just. So are you rapping? What you what you doing with? It? I mean, shit, I do. Cause see, like how I got involved with the scene here, I got involved with the skinheads. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't know that skinhead, the real skinheads aren't racist. That was actually created by Jamaicans. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. So I'm, I'm a Driller City skinhead. You know what I mean? 
And uh, I got involved in like the heavy, the hardcore scene. So I was going to like hardcore shows at like Pink Eye, Reverb, shit like that. You know, and I'm just like moshing and shit. Cause I was going through so much, and homeless and shit. Like, you know, being broke, I'm robbing niggas, I'm cooking, you know what I'm saying? All type of shit. So I was going to these hardcore shows, just, you know, wilding out. And then I got linked up with the Sharps, the Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice. You know what I'm saying? I got linked in with the skins here. I learned the difference between, I already knew the difference between skin and boneheads. You know, boneheads are the ones, you know, we call them white laces. They don't do the lace code no more. That died like over 40 something years ago. What is that? I don't know. The lace code is when like you see somebody in their boots. If you see a skinhead and they got all black boots on and they white and they uh, white laces, they got white I've laces that straight. Before. Like they're oh, bald head, they racist, but they got red laces. I've seen they that sharp. Going to school, like going to school, I seen. Yeah. Like so that. like, and then what got me involved into the music scene as far as rock was I was with this band called Surreal Soul. Misha Fox, that's my big sister. She motivated me to do my shit solo because I used to be with Matt Leone and them with uh, the label ENT. You know what I'm saying? I started out with man. them. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And then I started doing live band shit with my brother Black Keys. Shout out to Black Keys, my brother Bobby. And I, I joined Surreal Soul, and she was wearing this spaghetti strap shirt, and it said Freak Juice and Blood Splatter. And I was like, man, you always on some fucking female perv shit. She was like, no, you never heard of this band? Our drummer Stan, shout out to my big brother Stan Ferry. She was like, he plays drums, but it's an all black rock band. They got a show on my birthday on uh, St. Patrick's Day. It was called Red back in the day on 18th in Boston. Remember Red? Yeah, I remember Red. So they did a show there, and when I finally seen them, I'm like, nigga, this shit hard. And then it was like, who out there can rap? We need somebody to rap. Everybody's like, Jody, Jody. I'm like, bet. So he called me on stage, and I rapped for my first time. And then I rapped again on the second time I seen them at, it's called First Shop now, but back then it's called Plan B. But after I rapped that second time, man, they kept inviting me out, inviting me out. And then eventually in 2010, my very first official show with them was at Downtown Lounge. It's, it's shut down now. It was on uh, Archer and Cheyenne downtown. And I did a show with them, and then I started touring with them. And then that's how I got basically, because uh, Tory Ruffin, he's a part of um, More Stay in the Time. Okay. Yeah, bro, he played with Prince. He played with Fishbone. Shit, um, the band he was in, Coming to America, okay. Sexual Chocolate, that was his band, Kush, back in the 80s. Oh, okay. Yeah, that nigga got Grammys. That's the dude with, uh, the, for the Juice Man game. Yeah, yeah, okay. Tory Ruffin, yeah. yeah. He's the one with the locks. Okay. So he played, he, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's deep into the industry. Yeah. And I got tied in with him, man. I started doing tours with him. I did, man, I did. To be honest, bro, I made more money music with Freak Juice than anything, fam. Right. Touring, merch, shit, just mm -hmm. like... You know, doing that my might own be, thing. That might be the lane for you, man. Bro, everything, bro. That you might be you ain't even hear the jazz shit that I got. Yeah. Nigga, I got some shit. Nigga, one night. <laughs> That's crazy. It's the first time I'm talking about this on a podcast, bro. One night, I tripped acid with some of my musician homies. We tripped. <sighs> bro, in three to four hours, we made 17 songs. And it was the recorder just hit and we recorded 17 songs all the way through. We never pressed stop. Jazz? No, just like everything. Okay. Experimental, jazz, blue, like all types of music. But it was just, okay. you know, musicians going at it and jamming out. And I'm just freestyling. And we're like, yo, this is going to be a project. Man, I got so much shit, man. Just wait. I got some fucking, some folk music shit. Yeah, bro, some blues shit. I do everything, right, man. What's up? I'm the only hip hop artist. Man. Yeah, man, I'm a renaissance man, renaissance bro. Renaissance man. I'm That's pretty much up. the only I'm the only hip hop artist in Oklahoma that does pretty much every genre of music. And has done and worked with musicians that do every genre of music. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, Branche, you know Branche, right? That's my sister. You know Branche? After this, I'm gonna put you on put you on game. Branche, she just did Apollo. Okay, you know yeah. Reggie. Yeah. You, you, you know Reggie? How do you know Reggie? <laughs> <laughs> Reggie is like the Tina Turner of Oklahoma, fam. What do you mean? I got it. What? This is the most know. explosive performer. And she sings. 
All that. You need, bro, you need a dope singer, bring, hey, bring Jay. Put him up on game. If you need a singer. I singers. Yeah. She is worth it. No matter what she say her price is, fam, you got to pay it because. Right. But, um, yeah, bro, I got Brand J's first album, Power Source. Her first album, I'm the only rapper on there. So what's up? Yep. I made her album. Yep, fucking uh, uh, Just Face. She used to go by Brandy Hamilton. I've written songs for I've written songs for artists here, bro. Like yeah. like singers and shit. I've written songs for artists. Yeah. Blue House Media yeah, that's that's too. Joel. I've written songs, fam. Like man, I've written songs for so many people, dog. And this and shit. Freak Juice new album. I got. I've written two songs on it. Mm -hmm. And that's a rock album. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hands in the sky and uh, Dirty Little Secret. He's there. Dirty Little Secret is about the Tulsa race massacre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. And I get that's the credits it. for that shit too. Yeah, that's it. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah, bro. Shit, I, man, I got my PROs on deck. I've been knowing, man. I've been, I've been, and that's one thing too. A lot of motherfuckers be so scared to work with me because it's so hard to fuck me over. Yeah. Cause they look at you yeah. just a rapper. Yeah. And tell, tell me if you have you dealt, have you dealt with this. Motherfuckers be like, yeah, I want to work with you, but then they don't because they see you know your business because they expect you just be some yeah, of some knowledge some a, a, a rapper that don't know about their business yeah. nah fam i know well, about a, my a shit. lot of people know they already know that i know about my business yeah oh yeah <laughs> 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 so, they know come at me you know they know come at me right and also motherfuckers come at me to to game too like i don't have no problem yeah, yeah, yeah. with putting you up you know what i'm saying i don't have to get paid for this shit but how, I want to ask you, have you first? I, I, I watched many episodes, fam, of your fucking your podcast, fam. I haven't seen not one person ask you, how do you feel about the hip hop scene here in Tulsa? What is your overall? I feel like it would be better. I feel like, uh, for some reason, you got gatekeepers. Yep. For some, but it's, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like certain people you gotta go through. You know what I'm saying? When it shouldn't be like that. Oh no. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I feel like people now <clears throat> here look out for their own first, and then try to come back, or they try to mm -hmm. shun you, shun you. I'll push you to the side until they realize who you is. Mm -hmm. And then try to double back. Cause it has happened to me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like bro, you don't even know who I am. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you putting motherfuckers on that ain't ain't who they say they is. And that's I think <clears throat> that's big too. Uh -huh. Because I see a lot of people ain't living ain't living what they talking about. Yeah. You know what yeah. You're not living what you're talking about. And then also People just want to be internet famous, Facebook famous, all this, and you ain't making money off of what you got going on. Yeah. And that's what you were I, talking about earlier with the monetization yeah. and shit. You've been right. And mm. uh I see it and I keep it moving. Like I know what I'm getting paid. You might you might not like me, you might not not like me. You might yeah, not yeah. like my artist. Yeah. Uh whatever got going on, but just know they getting paid. Mm-hmm. And they don't get paid, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, and, yeah. But now I'm at a point where now it's like I feel like you gotta have bread. You gotta have some type of money behind you to get further to what you got going on because the money don't help with promotion. Ten percent of this shit is talent. Ninety mm -hmm. percent is business. business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So once people realize that, you get further. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> what's happening now is, due to social media, everybody want to be seen. You see what I'm saying? And it's the gratification. Exactly. And Man, they, they want to be seen. They want to be seen and really ain't got shit going on past the scene. So once motherfucker tap in to see what you got going on, and then they realize who you is as a person, what you got going on, they off you, 
for that 15 minutes of fame you had because you jumped out there too early without your business being in order. Yes, and, and what was what crazy, and then not only that, it could be in some cases, like in my case, a lot of cats would be like, man, you got too much shit going. They'd be like, oh, like I was on the phone with Money B from um, Digital Underground the other day. Mm -hmm. And he was like, bro, if you rap that part where you rap backwards on the end of your Tallulah song, I'm going to fly you up to Cali right now. And I'm like, bro, I haven't performed that song in so long. I don't even know how to rap that part backwards. Because most of us see me rap backwards where, like, if you play the footage backwards, yeah. it's going to sound like I rapped it forward. Because I know how to do that. Right. And motherfuckers that hit me hard. up. That'll be hard. Motherfuckers that hit me up and be like, Bro, what you got going with your with your career? And I'm like, bro, look, I'm a dad first. Right. That's first and foremost. Second, I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? Second, I'm a person. Third, I'm an artist. Right. I'm gonna worry about my kids and my family, and my tribe first. However, when it comes down to my music career, I have this going, I got that going, I got that going, I got this. To where like, I've had people that were like, I'm like, yo, can you manage me? And they're like, bro, I can't manage you because you're walking into places I can't even walk into. You're talking to people that I'm trying to introduce you to that I just met. But you already know these people. Right. So it's like, I got too much stuff going. You know what I mean? To a sense, but I feel like you gotta have more, like in order, I feel now nowadays, in order to succeed, mm -hmm. you gotta have you can't put all your apples into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, into one basket. Now, yeah. you can focus on one main thing that's bringing you, you know what I'm saying, your main revenue, whatever the case might be. You know what I'm saying? I know whoever coming up as an artist, they might, you know what I'm saying, still be in the street, so they doing whatever they doing. Or they might have a job, nine to five, you know what I'm saying, take care of their, you know what I'm saying, their family, whatever. So that might be the main thing. Mm -hmm. But as far as the... The secondary that comes along the way, and then uh -huh. whatever else you got going on. So I feel like you have to have more than more than one thing going because you never know what might pop first. So if motherfuckers ain't in tune, just say for say say for instance, <clears throat> if you have like, yeah. just say for instance you have or well, people know you for music, but the music ain't ain't going. And I ain't paying you like that. But then you put out a merch line. And your merch line hit. That merch line could bring people back to the music. So you have to have, you know what I'm saying? As long as you got it in order. Mm -hmm. Now, if, you, if it's scattered everywhere and you ain't got it in order, then yeah, you can, sit, you can have a sense of that. But if you got it in order where, say, like your merch line jumped before you jumped, now that's bringing you revenue mm -hmm. to where that could put money back into the music. You see what I'm saying? So now you might, because of the merch line, jump, you might go get a feature. Yeah, it's, it's just like my, my catering shit. Like, all right, before I get into that, like with my music shit. Catering like on food? Yeah, yeah, I do catering too. Mm -hmm. I have my own catering, I have my own hey, like photography hey, business. Hey, I do all that we shit. Been, we've, been yeah. talking, we've been talking music for an hour. We said catering, I said on food. <laughs> <laughs> you hungry? <laughs> Future references, any artist come on here that got catering, nigga, bring the food, nigga. Yeah, so and it's not only, it. nigga, we go, you gonna get your money, but you get the most important thing, the advertisement. Yo, you and you know what? Saying? Next time I come on your podcast, yeah. bro, we gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to make some dishes, bro. Right. We gonna do that, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 I'm gonna do, do an episode where we just like, you know, I'm helping you what, prepare what? this shit. So what you got? What like what what made man. you start? First off, what made you start? Man, I've been cooking since I was like eight. Okay. Like just raising kid, being a kid, raising kids. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm from the booth, yeah. bro. So yeah, from the booth. how I started with the catering business, I started. I, I had catered uh, my homeboys Battle League. That I used to co-own called uh, with all due respect Battle League. They do rap battles here, and so I was like, from the first battle I attended, I'm like, don't nobody got. No liquor here, ain't nobody said no liquor, ain't nobody said no food, niggas is hungry, they talking about leaving the fucking event to go get food. Yeah. So at the second battle that I attended, I was like, I'm gonna bring out the grill. So yeah. 
they had a propane grill that uh shot to my homie uh case at clean hands they had a they had a propane grill at clean hands downtown and so i made jerk chicken macaroni and cheese greens with turkey sauce that's like my signature meal right. with uh my grandma's yeah, recipe cornbread yeah, you know what i'm saying and sliced cake you know what I'm saying? from now on <laughs> if you're an artist and you got I need that. Up in it and you I don't know how old it is with your <laughs> shit you might as well not come over man <laughs> <laughs> no, like, he was ready to spaz. He was like, yeah. "Who do you go?" Know, I, I, mean, I mean, just I mean, it's nothing better than advertising, man. And you get paid in the process, like I say, man. You know yeah, no. Nah, next time I come on, man, I'm gonna bring some food over. We can cook. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can show y'all what I do. Yeah. But um, that's how I, bro, I started the catering business by mistake, fam. Because when I when yeah, I catered for them, organic shit, yeah, that's, that's the best best term. Yeah, yeah, but see, like what happened was when I catered for that battle. My homie Case that owns Clean Hands, he was like, yo, you good? I was like, man, I just made you a plate. He was like, oh, no, no, make sure you feed everybody. I'm like, no, nah, bro, you booked, you you, yeah. you gave us the plug on the venue. Right. You let me use your equipment. You get a free plate, whatever you want. Right. He was like, I don't even want it. So at the end of the battle, I came back with a big ass plate full of mac and cheese and greens and jerk chicken, yeah. fresh off the grill. He ate it, he was like, did you got anything other than jerk chicken? Oh yeah, yeah, bro. I do like a etouffee. I can do gumbo. Okay. I can do Italian food. Yeah. I can do tacos. Yeah, I can do. I do bro, I make, gumbo. Bro, be right. Everybody can bro, make gumbo. I, mean, I don't make gumbo. I make gumbo. I'm yeah, Creole. Right, right, South okay. Pacific. Right. Nigga, I make boat. Creole. Hey, yeah. yeah. from the boat. You know <laughs> bro, saying? so but my burgers I though, like, nigga, yeah. I my play. burgers are. Uh, can yeah. nobody in Tulsa that make music that cook? Yeah. Beat me at making burgers. And shout out to all my homies that got food businesses and shit. Yeah. But when it come down to burgers, jerk chicken, shit, man, look. I burgers by ask, itself, can't nobody fuck with I me. I would ask you what's so special about your burgers, but I don't I know. Can't you know what I can't tell you. I can't tell you. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna give you the rest of it. But I will say this. I was at a spot the other night that closed at 2 in the morning, and the nigga had a food truck outside. And end up giving people back their money. Have you ever thought about that? Oh yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Not done that. Doing what, you, what you mean? Him. I was at a spot the other night. I don't understand no why. Man. Why they give you the? Because because everybody is not what he said professional, unprofessional. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? All right. So you know a nigga orders food. You know what I'm saying? Right. Motherfucker come back. You know, hey man, I gotta get here your twenty back, here your forty back, here yo. You know what I'm saying? Like nigga, you know. It's money out here to be made. In the, in yeah, the, in the and then, and then you place. also have to treat your customers right, fam. So if your customer, yeah. if anybody come to me and say, "Hey, bro, this one right," and you know what, I'm gonna make something else that's gonna be better and hit your money back. Right. Well, my you thing is, saying? it's a, it's money to be made in a million different ways. Oh and yeah, if we can collab and make money, or whether it's solo and make money, you know what I'm saying? That's, oh yeah, that's all I was speaking on. Oh yeah, bro, and I'm always down to make money with my brothers yeah. and my sisters. Like yeah. nigga, we all we got. These shout motherfuckers out, don't shout even out care. To the sisters, hey, shout you know out to the motherfucking sisters, dog. The yeah. real sisters, the real man. Sisters, man. You know what I'm saying? They take yeah. accountability. They know how to communicate and comprehend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They know about. They know the difference between logic and emotion. Mm. Shout out to the real queens That's a whole out there, topic. bro. That's a whole hey, other topic. That's a whole <laughs> other topic. <laughs> hey, hey, relationship man, why is like they give you that too? I mean, hey, that's hey. a whole other topic, right? All right, man. before we get out of here, man, what what else you got? What you got for the people, man? What man, look, hey, I got merch. Um, first and foremost. Y'all stay tuned, click that like button, and subscribe to Chop Shop Podcast. My motherfucking boy, City Boy Chop, man. Look, hey, man, look, Chop Player, man, I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all for, for having me on here. Yes, That's first and foremost, man. Support these brothers, man. So, man, look, this man, look, rap, dope music, dope fucking, okay. nigga, hey, if you need some dope kicks, he got you. <laughs> Dope gear, he got you. Gear, it smell good, yeah. he got it you. Holla at this man, that's first and foremost. Second of all, uh, I got merch. If y'all need a good caterer, man, holla at me. Uh, follow me everywhere at 318ME918. That's at 318ME918. Um, man, check out, man, just, just tune in, man. Subscribe, all my shit. 
Um, my titles, Spotify, my music. Go stream that shit, man, because I feed my you know, kids from platforms? that shit. I'm on all platforms. Bro. All even Bandcamp. Even Bandcamp. All these platforms. Tap in with my boy, man. Yeah, hey, man. You know before, I, before you go, man. I need a verse, man. We got, we got, I, we got to get. A I got to get a verse from you, man. man I got, I got you. you. Artists, we got to get a verse. I got you. Uncut, no studio, straight raw. Right. Bad, bad, shit. Allow me to introduce me so you see who's the incredible fool that moves smoothly. Mm -hmm. Most rappers talk smack with no action, so fresh to death. My rhymes are closed caption, mm -hmm. ghost writing subtitles. All nighter, where flow goes to show there's no one like him. Leave all schemes to be, be please believe. Bring horror to the beats. The rap Stephen King, you act then you leave with cracked teeth. The spleen collapse, so you weak, lay back in the seas. Fire breathing, heathen, don't make me unleash the dragon like Cisco, cause this sick flow can get the bragging rights. Middle age cries that seem to be unheard of. I scribe with intentions of uplifting, word up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. But I, I got a verse. All right, all right, I, I've been right, trying to get right, some hooks okay, to okay, you. Okay. I got hooks for you, fam. Right. So if you, bro, I got you. Just send me some beats. All right. And I got you. And you keep the publishing. Just make sure you come this. back with a plate, though, nigga. Uh, no, I got that. No, when I come back, I'm yeah. going to show y'all how to make some shit, bro, right. from scratch. We're gonna do that. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, man. We're going to do that, dog. Yeah. And I'm going to have some food for y'all, man. Shit. All right, man. Salute to Mr. Burns, man. You just been top. With the chop shop, man. City boy chop player, Mr. Burns. Salute. Peace. Playboy money, man.